came up with the technology called blockchain where everything can be recorded it can be shared and it can be managed by uh, managed with accountability so uh, it came into being and there are several applications for blockchain so one of them is actually cryptocurrency which uh, then we come to uh, cryptocurrency uh, the introduction was first done by Bitcoin and it was worldly uh, worldwide it's been used as a currency now even for a time being Tesla was uh, Tesla was actually um, accepting Tesla is actually a company um, a car company which uh, accepted payments in Bitcoin okay so that is the brief uh, starting of Bitcoin okay so now um, when we start about Bitcoin Bitcoin um, also came into being with uh, the lack of transparency or challenges faced by our financial institutions around the world so I know some of you must have tried sending money outside or tried receiving money it takes at least three four days with the hassle of going with the difficulty of going to the bank getting your money out filling up numerous papers but what if you had an emergency I mean let's say you in the in the middle of the night you needed money and the guy was or the person who has to send you money was in another state you, you can the only way to get money in such an occasion was actually a tradition is go to your neighbors or go to your even bank account sometimes uh, you don't have money to dispense at time being and I know a couple of people who have had the difficulty but with this technology uh, the easiest way was you just tell your friend actually call him up say hey I, I need to borrow some money or, or you can call your dad and mom and say I need money and within two seconds I mean let's say realistically five five minutes you'll have the money no matter no no matter where you are in the world so transactions became much quicker and became 24 hours you did not need to man anyone in a bank or you need need not ask anyone and fill up forms it became so easy so it became widely adopted in one way uh, the other uh, other say uh, other reasons why Bitcoin actually became popular was um, because the ease of use and the technology behind it and the security so during this uh, when Bitcoin became popular during the late 2012 um, there was so much and even till today there's so much uh, uh, talk about how uh, Bitcoin is a new gold and uh, how the new generations are adopting it uh, to use for different varieties of transaction like one of the biggest companies other than Tesla that has accepted Bitcoin is Virgin Atlantic uh, uh, that is Virgin Airlines uh, if you need to book a ticket with Virgin Airlines you can basically pay in Bitcoins including um, companies like PayPal uh, PayPal is something like Paytm uh, but on the broader scale of global scale they will also accept Bitcoin um, also companies like uh, JP Morgan banking institution have slowly adopted Bitcoin um, and the reason behind this is uh, the ease of use and accountability and the transparency it brings with it um, but some institution of course with new technology and new things invented there's always going to be questions resistance and people have to get adopted to it so it will take time but it's more about getting to know and being ready to use it when it's there and uh, uh, it, it's going to it's going to change it's like that's why it says this new steam engine because it will change the way you look at currencies and it's much more greener than um, um, most of the currencies that we use uh, so with the with the world going into um, renewable sources and being more efficient uh, cryptocurrencies are one way to do it now uh, thinking about Bitcoin um, there are numerous other uh, technologies that can be used with Bitcoin other than that is the basic of your transferring of currencies but on the back end or in I mean um, let me more simple 
on the what you don't see or like the transfers behind the banks uh, just a basic idea was the, until the 1970s um, all the bank or world currencies was um, controlled by uh, how much gold you had as a reserve but the america americans decided okay come on it's not a practical way to do it they decided to take it off and now there's nothing tangible for you to have a currency printed you can basically there are a couple of uh, laws and within that law frame you can basically print currencies and it became so um opaque i mean you couldn't you couldn't really know what's happening behind the scenes and during the uh, 2008 financial crisis when we had a lot of uh, problems especially on the financial sector a uh, couple of i mean a lot of people lost their money because of uh, un, uh because of uh, lack of transparency and lack of information and lack of knowledge and then slow sorry and then couple of people decided from around the world globally decided okay we need to actually revive this whole industry of lending money transferring money and bring more security transparency into it and that's how this bitcoin comes into being itself okay that is a small information on that now on the back side of um, bitcoin banks actually are being uh, are now asked to adopt this way of using bitcoin because our okay it's like when you send money there's a security code like the pin you have a 28 digit it, it's a long okay it's a basically a code that entails security for your transfer of money and it's controlled by one nation and be, and it's always uh, it takes a lot of time and money and effort and it's an outdated 1980s um, technology that's been used till today it's called swift basically and that's why they ask you for swift codes so this swift codes have been outdated it's slow and it's not really that friendly for anyone to use and it's, it can be only accessed by the banks but at this place when you have so much technology when you're connecting everyone and life has been so fast we needed a technology that can be as same as that and that's where bitcoin came into place now like for example um if you want to transfer money to most of the countries it has to either go through an exchange center in the an exchange center is where they control the money and they have to send it to an another exchange center in the country and then it gets credited to the bank and back to our bank accounts but with a with bitcoin you don't even need those as long as you have internet and a phone you can basically transfer money and it's properly accounted for so you can actually that's basically the idea i mean long before we have currency basically we could have actually transacted with any any people in the world you give them something they give you something back and we have accountability and we have the government to check those accountability and if you really look into it and government start adopting it because they can see now that it can be checked it can be verified and so basic and uh, later uh, coming into early when the currency started with civilizations then you had gold coins which was expensive or you had coins and then it became into currencies and okay now you had paper currencies so each time the transition was made okay whoever got into this technology was the first ones and of course it had a lot of hardships and people took a lot of time to understand it it's like telling okay in my generation if i tell my grandfather okay you're going to have like this uh, meeting over the um, computer they would never believe i mean they'll be like how can that happen okay so but at this era we actually have that same thing if you're going to tell an old person or like let's say let's tell our grandparents okay you're going to have digital currencies you do not need paper currencies anymore they would not be able to accept it so it will be a slow transition from um paper currency to digital currency and it was the same way how the atm cards into being we didn't have that long time back slowly it was introduced now most of, at least 
the banking sector who has who are accessible to the banking sector now uses the ATM cards. Okay, and with going forward, ATM cards and ATMs are not always accessible to everyone. Uh, it's only accessible to less than 20% of the population. Because first of all, you need to go to a place or a good um, uh, place that has those or bank that has those systems. But um, not everywhere, especially in India or let's say developing countries, we do not have that kind of technology or that kind of facilities or infra infrastructure to be precise. So people are left with still with carrying cash and the old technologies. Now, uh, but the amazing part here is even those all the developing countries, 80% of the people, or we can even say 90% of the people have access to internet. And you'll be amazed, even if you go into the tribal communities, they have access to internet. And you have an access to a phone. So now with that technology, you put it put Bitcoin or your financial sector into it. Most the 70 percent who doesn't belong to the banking sector can be also bought into the banking sector. And it's a safe way to transact and it will be uh, convenient for everyone in the long run. And now you can see also European countries are slowly adopting it. Uh, as Sujam is told, one of the countries has also adopted it. And US has slowly started thinking about legalizing it finally, but there are already Bitcoin ATMs, ATM cards. You can already purchase if you go to coffee shops or any of the restaurants to buy or get food. You can basically pay in using your Bitcoin card. It's like an ATM card. Uh, and also, um, there are uh, researches and different types of currencies that are coming along with Bitcoin. Even a um, couple of days ago, Indian government was uh, slowly starting to accept. Indian government is one of the government that has been resisting the movement of Bitcoins because you would not have control over financial sectors anymore once like you cannot just say okay you can only transact with these people you can't limit them but with limited control people have more access even to abroad and within our systems so i think um slowly the government is also coming to realize that it's going to be a asset for our country and they have come they are slowly starting to adopt it i think they're also uh, starting to work with the legal uh, legal frameworks then we also have China and big, all the big economies are slowly coming into this. And it will be also good for you guys uh, as students, just try to read about it, get to know about it. And then um, maybe even talk to your teachers, parents, ask. And if you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask. Thank you. If anybody has any questions for Mr. Alex Abraham, you can ask. Sir, what are the qualifications to become a uh, to go for piloting? Okay, let's get into piloting sector. I know most of them are interested in that. <laughs> um, okay, I'm basically a pilot. Uh, I actually graduated from Labor India, and then I was so adamant that I wanted to be a pilot. My mom and my dad tried everything, actually, to uh, persuade me out of piloting. <laughs> so they told me, okay, I. But I actually wanted to join the Air Force, and that is the only thing. So finally, they told, okay, choose the lesser evil. Which one do you want? Piloting or work for my dad? So I decided piloting still. <laughs> uh, and then they sent me to uh, Australia, which I did some of my studies there. And then I came back, helped my dad a bit, and then went back to Philippines, where I completed my piloting. And um, so um, the basic, I only had plus two. With, I was, but I was a science uh, with maths graduate. Uh, but that was that was for just for me to, in case, uh, come back to India. I um, that's how I started my piloting career. But in the at the same time, I started studying other courses while doing it because you have a lot of time at your hands. And usually, the piloting course is only a year. 
and uh, there are piloting courses for four years as a degree course so basically you get a bachelor of science in piloting and uh, it all Hello. Yep. So that's how you can basically you just need a plus two for your piloting and then you can have piloting. But as a person, I would suggest you to get uh, a degree and then go for piloting. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I have got a doubt. Like we were really curious to know about your bio as you, you were having the pilot as well as the boxing field, right? One is already asked the pilot one. So we would, uh, we would like to ask what about the boxing, how you got up in the boxing? <clears throat> okay, that is, um, I basically started a uh, little bit of martial arts when I was young, basically calorie pipe and all of that. And then uh, we had a little bit of yoga classes while studying in Labor India, we had this karate and all those <laughs> classes during Saturdays. Okay, so I was, okay, let's see this, let's see what happens. I might just skip. Okay, just to be honest, I skip one or two classes here and there, go play football and other stuff. <laughs> and then, um, but it helped eventually when I uh, went out, uh, I actually started as fitness for fitness training. I uh, had some friends who were interested in boxing, basically not just boxing, but some mixed martial arts. Uh, did some jujitsu, Muay Thai and all of, all of that. And then eventually one day, or not, my, my coach asked me to, um, hey, why don't you give it a give it a try? Uh, try to train for professionally. And I I did I did for two years and had a couple of fights. I had actually three fights with no losses. And um, yeah, and I had to stop it because my career was also piloting, so it wasn't good. Actually, it, I mean. I also I deal with um, a lot of BVIPs, like I fly, sometimes get to fly the presidents or um, uh, very dignitaries and you cannot go into flying with a black eye or a sore hand. <laughs> They'll be like, hey, what have you been up to? So I had to, I have to give it up, uh, which I was happy because I was always happy with flying. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So what do you mean by Bitcoin mining? What is it? Um, excuse me, can you say it again, please? I can't, I can I cannot hear you. Can you so what is Bitcoin mining? Mm, I, I, I think it's Darshan who's, Darshan who's, uh, Lavane who's talking, but Darshan. can you no. Can you be more loud, please? I, I can, uh, it's very um, choppy. So what is Bitcoin mining? Uh, Bitcoin what mining. Okay, uh, Bitcoin mining is actually, uh, okay, let me put it on simplest terms. Uh, it's like solving a puzzle. So the art, it has, uh, the artificial intelligence actually, basically that's where AI comes into being. So each time you, you solve a puzzle, you get a coin or you form a coin, but you cannot just do it by yourself or your computer. There are actually computers that are capable of running those programs. And once you do it, you actually get a coin, rewarded a coin once you solve it. So that is basically Bitcoin mining in simplest terms. And usually nowadays, okay, let's say when you started Bitcoin or when we started Bitcoin, you could actually mine using a laptop or a like a good PC. But at least as years pass by, it, the puzzles or the the programs to solve became or the let's say let's say it didn't like the puzzles. The puzzles became much more harder to solve. 
So when it gets harder, you need more computing power. Basically, you you need uh, bigger uh, computers and everything. So we have we have now mining computers specially dedicated for mining or getting it solved with with being more energy efficient. So usually how it is done is called it's called Bitcoin Bitcoin mining farms, where you have thousands of computers and CPUs with uh, working together and uh, even uh, what they do is they they work for one coin and once they get it they sell it they actually uh, bring it to the market and uh, that's how oh. it's Bitcoin mining is Computer now like growing because 10 years back Bitcoin was also very small, but now it's a new value. Uh, hold on, can you say it again? I'm actually, uh, if you can speak a little bit louder, I can actually uh, answer you. Is Bitcoin the safest crypto to be invested, or like we should invest in many other small, small uh, cryptos because. Few years back, Bitcoin was also very small, but now it has a huge value. Hello. Yeah. Okay. You're talking about now investing in Bitcoin. That's a totally different um, uh, industry. Okay. Investing in Bitcoin. Of course, you can actually invest in Bitcoin. Uh, I mean, I personally invested in Bitcoin way, way, way back, and when it was below. A thousand dollars, and it. I got into it. I, I got interested because of my friends, and we talk a lot. We keep we, we keep ourselves ad, updated, like what we do now. Uh, we used to talk about it, see what is the potential, and even till today, even me and Sir Rajesh has we get uh, we call each other, talk about what 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 do you think is going to be the future. We do that and it encourages us to explore more options. Okay, so investing into Bitcoin is a completely different thing. It's like being in a stock market. So you should really know when to invest and what time to invest. Because basically people have this wrong conception that if you just put money into Bitcoin, you're going to get money. The factor and then supply that is there in Bitcoin. So suddenly you see actually the Bitcoin prices are going up. There are numerous factors that makes it go up. So, okay, 2016, actually when it, 2016, 2017, when it started going up, uh, it was actually because the first factor was there was a lot of uh, games that was being adopted, which were used by Bitcoin. So once the prices started going up, People thought, okay, if I invest in it, I can make more money. So people started buying Bitcoin a lot. So the money, the currency actually just shot up from $1,000. It went all the way to 10,000, actually 12,000 USD. So, and then now when people started, okay, there is also something called a correction. A correction is actually when it's the prices are inflated, it has to correct at some point. The demand was so high, but actually the the game that was sold or the the real demand or the the back what was backing Bitcoin was in there. So of course, automatically it would correct, and it corrected, and it went back to five thousand, six thousand dollars. And recently, it has been going up because again, a lot of companies have actually adopted, and this time it's more. In institution, institutionalized and investors are the one who are buying. It's not those uh, gamers or the first time. Uh, it's, it's big companies like PayPal, JP Morgan, and all those companies who are trying to buy. When they buy Bitcoin, that means it's like basically investing into the company and giving those people actually control to make something better. So uh, you should really study about, I mean, um, investing into Bitcoin because when you invest it's a very volatile market but you can start small and the best time actually a uh, suggestion for you or who are willing to invest in it uh, the best time to invest is actually there is a phenomenon called halving 
so the when the bitcoin hub basically let's say you five years you have been mining bitcoin and there is 100 bitcoins there is this time in every five years there is this period where they will um, take away a 50 percent of those uh, coins so that is the best time to invest because they will see the demand increase and when you invest on it of course the prices go up the halving happened on 2020 late 2020 so that's why you see those bitcoin prices go up right away but now it's late i mean half of 2021 so it's supposed to stabilize and come down which is happening right now so is there any disadvantages to this one? Yeah, one of the disadvantages to Bitcoin is it is it is like saying, um, let's say our when we invented computers, we had computers which were um, very slow, and those were the first computers. But um, uh, so Bitcoin is naturally like the first one on the block. And there has been a lot of updates, but still it is slow compared to, uh, you have um, coins like uh, Ethereum, which is ADA. Um, you have to read a little bit. If I go on it, I can talk the whole day about that. But uh, the best way to say it is there are better coins. There are better uh, currencies that are coming, but Bitcoin will always be like the gold, will be the benchmark. So that is advantage, but it is much slower than some of the currencies that are coming. Uh, some of the platform that has been built on is much more advanced, much more. It's like almost a fifth generation, which has been built on. So uh, there are limitations to Bitcoin. Okay. Any more questions? I can ask about anything. I, I'm actually willing to talk. Sir, why you shift to Philippines? Okay, I did not shift to Philippines. I actually, um, it was just my dad. Uh, I, okay, that is something to do with traveling. I travel a lot. Uh, I I visited almost, I, I visit at least one or two countries a year. And uh, it keeps me in con contact with a lot of people. And that's why I choose uh, flying. I like to travel. Then the second thing is, uh, being in the Philippines was just an um, un, un, um, it was not a conscious decision. It's an unconscious decision which led me there. I was supposed to visit the place and go to Australia. And when I went there, I was offered a job. I was offered a very good job. So I decided to stick back in, uh, in Philippines. And I also saw the potential because it was quite similar to Kerala and it, I would, it was very easy for me to come back home and it was a developing country. So that, that is the only reason why I actually uh, decided to stick with Philippines. But I actually studied in uh, Australia. I have studied in US and I've also studied in Philippines. I occasionally travel uh, to Europe and also Africa. Hi Alex, uh, hi. Okay, hold on a second. Actually, uh, yeah, this is my. Hi. This is my yeah. Hi. <laughs> 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 You're singing very nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ah, yeah. Okay. So, every day, I'm very young. I'm very young. Okay. 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 Uh, one of the second, the second most popular one that has come up recently is actually um, Ethereum. It's not very recent, actually. Ethereum has been there for some time. Then uh, you've been, uh, if you actually, I, I can give you a site which you can go to. It's called Market Insider. I mean, and if it's not just for one cryptocurrency, 
it's called market insider that's a trading platform so if you go there there is a section for it just for cryptocurrencies and if you scroll down you can see list there's a there's 100 types of cryptocurrencies that are available there which you can buy legally and um, my my favorite actually is uh, ethereum and cardano dogecoin is also doing well so um, it, it it depends on what technology are you interested in what's backed up by it and what are you what do you want thank you sir why does the price fluctuate so much darshan can you the bitcoin price fluctuate so much like it goes up and then goes very down ah okay why does it fluctuate so much that, that's a very good question actually that's fluctuation because <coughs> it's it's because of the trading that we it, because it's publicly traded uh, so basically the the easiest way to say it is demand and supply when there's more demand there is uh, the price goes up so fast and when there's more where there's more supply i mean there's less demand it actually comes down and unlike before, like normal traditional trading platform, you need to call a broker and say that, hey, I need to trade my coins. Or I need to trade uh, the shares of a company that I have. It takes time. So it's quite stable and people would not have access to getting information at hands right away. So uh, at this time, you can do it by yourself. You have a laptop, you want to trade, get onto it. You see it drop, you can just dump your coins anywhere that you want and other people to buy. So when there is more supply on the market, you will see the price dropping. So technology has got to do with one of those factors. That's why it's highly volatile. And then people, uh, those who actually, uh, early investors or let me say, those who start Bitcoin, once you start dropping, they try to sell it off, even for a small loss. So when there's excess supply, of course, now the prices are even going, going to drop more because we're not going to buy for the same price that he sold. We're going to, of course, bargain for better price. That's why. And uh, the other, there's also reasons like, uh, there are other reasons where high profile people also, uh, Okay, like investors like Elon Musk or someone says, okay, hey, um, I'm not going to use it. People think, okay, Bitcoin, we are going to have a hard time with Bitcoin and <laughs> have two kids, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, they actually, uh, I mean, like people, high profile people, when they say that, uh, okay, I'm not going to use it. They, everyone speculate there's also speculation part in the trading market when speculation is that happen uh, when speculation happens that there's going to be an oversupply prices automatically drop so these are the factors simple factors behind the high volatility of bitcoin asking uh, yeah. does the government know how much crypto we have ma'am now am i okay. clear Oh, yes. OK, now now it's better. Uh, the government cannot actually can know how much crypto you have or you own, but they will have to create a system to track uh, how much you own. And basically, same like having money, there's always, especially with blockchain, there is traceability to it. So the government can, of course, trace who this Bitcoin went to and who is owning it. Yes, it can be done. So one more doubt. Yeah. Uh, if I own some large or some amount of crypto Bitcoin, am I in a risk of getting hacked? Can my currency go if someone hacks into my uh, laptop or something? Okay. Um, usually, how we lose crypto, that you're basically, uh, it's a very good question, actually. It's basically like leaving your wallet on an open space. Okay, if you go to a public market and leave your wallet, what happens? Someone will take it. Okay, so like in this modern world, okay, let's say you have cryptocurrency and you're going to leave it on a laptop or and then you use it or you interact on the technology with uh, people that you do not know. There are ways to get it, but there are also uh, ways that you can protect your 
uh, cryptocurrencies like wallets just have to put it in the wallet not on your desktop and you put it you can carry it with you wherever you want or you can put it in a safe and then you can actually just use how much ever you want or you can download it and you will not have a problem with hacking and then even if okay let's say hacking one guy's cryptocurrency is actually not worth it uh, you have to basically hack institution and every day it's becoming harder to hack because the money involved in hacking will not be or will not be sufficient or you cannot it won't be that profitable by just hacking a cryptocurrency sir in coming years like in next 10 15 years will bitcoin have the same power as it have now or will other small cryptos take over okay um as in value uh, bitcoin will always be a benchmark uh it will be the one it's like the gold uh something you need a you need some kind of benchmark to keep it so bitcoin will always be the benchmark but in terms of value versus other cryptocurrencies yes there's a potential that um uh, better technology will overtake bitcoin uh, but it will take at least 50 to 60 years for that to happen but um if um there are better technology within that time it will still have to prove itself to overtake bitcoin or why it should be better than bitcoin as a benchmark before it can actually get valued at that price is there any other cryptocurrencies that you recommend that will have lower risk of the price is going down uh actually cardano is a very good um cryptocurrency to um invest in but i'm not an investor guidance uh, let me be very specific i just want to tell you that uh, because you should not invest because i told you so you should always it's your personal choice for me personally cardano is very good um ethereum is good uh dogecoin i it's good but then it's highly inflated so you might also get corrections in such a pace that you know it also ma matters when you're getting in so my always go to is ethereum and cardano but cardano is just an upcoming currency and just a rule of the thumb is that if you invest in any of those cryptocurrencies that is when it's less than a dollar and it has a good technology backup uh it's not bound to fail it will somehow uh uh it will repay you and it's a good investment and take note cryptocurrencies and investments are using the technology to develop something and using it as investment or a quick money is not the way to go i mean especially cryptocurrency don't think that you can invest and make money quickly you should really study about it before you invest in it thank you sujamesh thank you for thank you all the students for listening patiently no i mean not i ah! but then, yeah my kid says hello also yeah hello hello <laughs> thank you so much uh, yeah. spe our special regards to gala and kids yeah. and your parents too thank you so much